I'm happy to report that our first uh, memorandum of understanding will be signed uh, this month. I arrived in uh, October uh, of 2022. That's when I was appointed. And uh, immediately after that, I was uh, able to sit down with the Amir, where I presented my, uh, uh, my papers. And we also had uh, a discussion on uh, where the direction that we wanted to take our bilateral relations between our two countries. Um, and then he, at, at that point, he did uh, offer his unconditional support uh, to this mission, which we are very grateful for. The greatest achievement so far is that we have set up a foundation for ourselves uh, by initiating the signing of several agreements. As you are aware, we are um, uh, a new embassy and some of the agreements are not in place. So those are the things that we've been running around. I'm happy to report that our first uh, memorandum of understanding will be signed uh, this month, around the 16th, when uh, the Minister of Defence is going to come leading a delegation uh, to sign uh, an MOU with the State of Qatar on Defence and Security. But uh, first approaching also is the, uh, the signing on uh, labour. We have instituted the, uh, a revival of the Bilateral Air Services Agreement. Uh, we are also looking at uh, uh, completing signings on uh, trade agreements and so on and so forth. So, so far, that's, uh, that's what we have done. We have also been able to, to get in touch with the uh, Qatar Fund for Development uh, through the Qatar Red Crescent Society as well as the Qatar Charity. Uh, we had very fruitful meetings with them. Uh, and that came also behind uh, the, the, the catastrophe that happened in Malawi uh, with the cyclone Freddy. And we were able to sit down with them. Fortunately for us, they came through with a, a lot of assistance and they did deploy a team on the ground to Malawi to assess the situation. And they also backed that up with, um, uh, with resources. We were able to, to host our president here in Qatar when he came to uh, attend the, uh, well, he was chairing the LDC5, the, the Conference for Least Developed Countries, uh, during which time we also had meetings with the several business uh, entities like the Qatar uh, Chamber of Commerce and the Qatar Businessmen Association. Uh, so far, I think that's what we have achieved, and I think within the s seven, eight months or so, that's uh, quite a bit. Uh, but we are looking forward to making sure that these are cemented because every uh, interaction between the two countries is going to depend on the existence of these uh, uh, agreements. And as soon as the sooner we get those done, the better. So uh, what I would say is that for now we are not where we would like to be uh, because we're just starting. But so far, what we have um, uh, done is that we have, like I said, initiated the signing of the. Uh, agreement of protection of assets and investments for both countries. Uh, the agreement on uh, avoidance of double taxation is also in the pipeline. So within those two, we think that the, the economic uh, atmosphere is going to change when we have those signed. Because what we are looking for mostly is um, a, a friendly country like Qatar, where we are going to uh, create win-win situations now, we, we, we know that Qatar is uh, investing in many different countries and we would like to uh, come to the table with our offers as well. We have a lot of prospects, especially in mining, uh, agriculture and tourism. And we feel that uh, if the Qataris uh, come to the table with us, they will be able to notice that we have um, quite an offering to make. Looking at Qatar is uh, one of the the, the best countries when it comes to development is one of the stories that uh, people look at and, and, and see a country that has been able to lift itself up into one of the richest countries in the world. And then on the flip side of that, you also have a country that is uh, doing the utmost to, to, to uh, combat climate change by reducing emissions and so on and so forth. And so we feel that uh, I feel that my posting here was based on those strengths that I'll be able to sit here in Qatar and analyze the development trends that are happening here 
and uh, see where, uh, as a country, we can leverage on those. And also, uh, being a country that is uh, hit by the effects of climate change, uh, we would want to see how sitting across the table from the Qatar, a country that is doing very well in uh, climate change, to see how we can uh, craft a situation where we also uh, benefit from that uh, uh, relationship. When, when you look at the, the mission here, because the, it's very easy for me to make this constant uh, uh, engagement with the Qatari government. And, and so to, to answer your question, I think the first of all, like I said, is to, to set up a, a foundation uh, of uh, interaction between the, the Malawi government and the Qatari government. But also not forgetting that uh, in, in implementing that mission, we also need to look at our diaspora, the people that are here. Uh, to make sure that the, they understand the laws that, that uh, are here in Qatar and also the laws of Malawi and that they, while they are here, they make the, mis the most benefit for themselves and for the country where they are from as well as the country where they live. We have close to 300 Malawians, uh, some that work in uh, the unskilled areas and quite a number that are in uh, the banks and, you know, the international organizations. So within that number, we have a good mix of, you know, the Malawian culture. And so we are looking to increase that um, because we also feel that there's going to be an economic benefit in that for us to bring labor here. Uh, we have seen other countries, uh, I think I'm allowed to mention Kenya, for example, that has quite a number of uh, of their workers here, as well as India that has close to, I'm told, 800,000 citizens living here. And how that benefits the country is that if, if they do remittances back home, it sort of uplifts their, their, their economy. So um, that's one of the areas that we're also going to be concentrating on. Malawi foreign policy has always been a developmental uh, diplomacy or economic diplomacy. Um, being a country that uh, believes in uh, peaceful resolution to, to conflict and also being dialogue being at the center of it, we, I think we have the same values with Qatar. But as far as the, our policies, they have never changed, I think, since, since independence in 1964, where we are uh, a development diplomacy-oriented uh, mission. So we, we look at partners, we look for partners that come to the table to assist us and then not us just receiving the assistance but also being of assistance to the other country. So we're mostly looking at development and that has never changed. The, the first thing that I, I can challenge you is that if you go anywhere in the world, they will tell you that uh, Malawi has the most friendly people in the world. So our biggest, our biggest asset for now is, is is the people. But aside from that, we also, I did mention that uh, we have one of the best, the biggest uh, freshwater lakes in the world, uh, Lake Malawi. And this uh, Lake Malawi has um, the biggest variety of freshwater fish in the world. And that's one of our biggest attractions is the lake. Uh, uh, in that area, we have um, upcoming uh, hotels, but I think what we need to do is to build hotels that are to the standard that, you know, to international standards, like the ones that we have here. And maybe that would uh, play a role in attracting more uh, visitors. We have the, the Malawi um, 2063 is, is our guiding policy. Within it, one of the pillars uh, talks about uh, how we should improve uh, tourism. So there's um, a whole ministry that is uh, geared towards tourism and uh, their job is to drive that policy agenda as well as trying to, to invite people from different countries.